everybody! So, my name is Lindsay Jerome and I am starting my blog. And the first thing I wanted to focus on with you all, especially that I think is helpful and it's fun, especially during some downtime, is I'm doing a remodel on the living quarters compartment of my horse trailer. So, I ride horses and I've been riding horses for a while. And uh, my husband and I have a lot of other fun sports that we like to do, like mountain biking and surfing and he dirt bikes, I'm slowly getting, I wanna get into dirt biking, but we go to the desert and we go camping and we go do this. And uh, he drag races as well. So that's a project for the future. We would eventually like a living quarter trailer for the drag racing to save on hotel costs too. And it's nice to stay at the track, but let's focus on the horse trailer. So the horse trailer we actually found in Texas. I'm originally from Oklahoma and we currently live in Huntington Beach, California. And all the trailers that we're finding out here were very expensive and a little bit over, which would be, it's normal in California. Often things, depending on what they are, tend to run a little bit higher price range. But, so we ended up finding this horse trailer in Texas. It's a 2003, no, it's a 2002 model Exus. It's a three horse living quarters. And so for people who don't know, and came to this blog via RV renovation. It's very similar. Uh, the living quarter compartment of the horse trailer is where the humans stay. And then there's the horse trailer part, kind of like a toy hauler in the back. And so we can kind of use it as a toy hauler in a way too. So that's why we decided to put a little extra money into the renovation of the actual horse trailer. So let's go see what I've done so far. I actually started videoing I didn't start videoing, I'm sorry. My apology is that I didn't start videoing and then I've already progressed on the renovations, but I'll get y'all caught up to speed. So let's go see what I've done so far. See you there. All right, so here's the trailer, old school. It's really kind of a really cool trailer. It's well built, all the bones are still very intact. Uh, we're gonna put new wheels on it and make those babies shine. And then we're gonna do a lot of people will do like an acid wash. And then after that, we're gonna do a heavy buffing job and just make that aluminum shine again. And even the white, you know, the white gets kind of crusty and dried out. And then this old decal, I'm not quite sure. We'll see if I can kind of buff some life back into that. If not, we might try and go the long haul and pull it off. Maybe that's not a good idea. But, so what we did, and it's a disaster in here, so I apologize, but we ship lapped. So, we were looking for a way that made sense to shiplap because as you can kind of see, this right here is not a straight wall. It kind of uh, curves right into the nose of that gooseneck. So right here, the bed compartments in these horse trailers are always up on this gooseneck, unless you get like a super, super big extravagant one. And then there's different various ways they put beds in them. But typically this is what you're looking at. And he had the little windows, and so I touched those up with some spray paint and just black semi-gloss, and it really brightened them up, made them look really pretty and pop to something that was like, am I going to frame this in, or am I going to just let it be what it kind of was and give it some new life? And uh, we did, I think it was, um, it's smaller than a quarter inch. I could get the exact measure. It's actually, uh, you can find it like a one-fifth inch plywood underlayment and you can get it for super cheap like four feet by eight feet is only like 15 to 20 bucks and we just started stacking and building them and then cutting them and then framed in this little wall and i went with white because i wanted to do kind of like the boho trendy theme the white and black with some bold in it and so um we did the white and i did the cabinets the very same color of white just the cabinet paint so with that, you have to have a special kind of oil-based paint to stick to these laminate doors because, and then you have to have a bonding primer. So if you guys want to do this, you have to get a gripper primer, FYI. So that worked out really well. And then I got, I bought hardware and literally it was like 30 bucks off of Amazon. It wasn't bad at all. And then I spray painted the hinges. So I just took off the old ones and then spray painted those semi-gloss black. And what else has been done? Oh, I put a polyurethane clear coat on all of the shiplap and the cabinet. So on the cabinets, I put a gloss and on here I put a satin, but you can imagine 
especially with us. And my husband wears a size 16 shoe. His shoe won't even fit on there. So we're going to scuff up that wall a little bit. So I might actually put another coat on just this wall and these steps. So on the steps, now we're going to cover it. I'm honestly, my husband's going to hate me because we already got a basic wood that I was planning on staining. Sorry, I was like off in no man's land over there with the camera. And we were going to use that, but now I'm thinking, my God, I want it to look uniform. I love this red wood. I love the color and I can't get that in a stain. Everything I have tried, I'll show you my little sample board that I have just, it looks awful. <laughs> and maybe I'm just not blessed with staining. As many things I've found, I'm not very blessed with, but uh, yeah. So, and let's see what else did I do? I repainted all of the little, uh, the light switches and I used the same epoxy appliance. So I repainted this cause it was all yellowed and there's, I can even show you the products and I can put them in the link so that you guys can find them. But it's just like a, a basic, has a refrigerator on the label spray paint and it takes a mountain of cans. It's not just like one and done. Thank you, ma'am. It's like five and you have to freaking wear a gas mask almost because the stuff's intense. But, you know, I like it. I like the way that it really brought this thing back to life because it was just nasty and yellow. And to have these bright new walls all pretty and then to have a yellow shower, no thanks. So that wasn't going to work. And then I got some really cool wallpaper that I just got off of Amazon. And so we did like a little accent wall right here. And... Kind of looking back on it now, I wish, because I did so much black and white, I wish I would have done kind of a bolder accent wall, you know, like something with some bright colors and bold tones. But, you know, I'm really happy with it, and it's cool. And it was kind of a pain in the butt to put up, so it's staying. It has a home. And then we ship popped this. So all in there, and there's the toilet. Got to figure out how to make that look a little bit prettier down there once we start doing final touches. I'm not quite sure about that yet. It's really not that cute. Uh, there used to be a weird little slinky door that ran up here. We're going to replace the ceiling too, but um, I didn't like it. And it was yellow too. And it was going to be a pain in the rear to try and figure out how to do something different with it. So I'm literally going to put this uh, little curtain rod. I'll show it to you. Home Depot right here. And then just run a cute little curtain. It's just going to be us in here. So if somebody needs to come in that's not in the family, we'll just leave the trailer <laughs> so they can go to the bathroom. Or we can turn on some music while they tinkle so they're not as embarrassed. But, it, you know, it's it's small. It's a very small space, but it's doable. It's a little weekender. So here's the door. This actually goes, and I can't open it. I've got shavings backed up to it. But it goes to the stud, uh, the stud slot. So in this horse trailer, the first one, has kind of a bigger divider and most people just use that as storage. These people, it only had one owner and they only used it as storage, but I'm definitely going to do something cute with this. I thought about leaving it stainless steel because I do love the industrial look, but I got some like these, uh, for the backsplash, I did these Tic Tac tiles, which I halted that because I need to finish the countertop and the sink first, but this is, and they're just like a flimsy kind of have a cool gel like texture plastic and you literally just peel off the back and they've got a killer adhesive and these aren't amazon prime but you can find them on amazon but there's a hectagon pattern that i was going to do for this back wall so it'll kind of look a little bit more uniform it won't stick out like a sore thumb because i thought about doing the thumb black and white again trying to be a little bit bolder than i wanted to be and it just looked kind of cheesy I don't know. It just didn't work. Didn't work for me. So, I don't know. And then my husband did this. This is super cute. So, kind of like a little barnyard door. And we just used what was left of that shiplap. And uh, just painted it. So, this is going to be black. This bottom cabinet. You can kind of see it has a small face, but black. And then this is actually the front of the little baby fridge. So cute. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. I have this like um, marble, kind of like faux marble look. 
wallpaper and I literally might just cover it with that. Who knows? I'll figure it out as I go. But and here's a little dinette table. So those cushions are actually in the house and I have to reupholster them. I'm just gonna recover them with a faux caramel colored, like a light colored leather. So again, bringing in some of these warm red tones into my black and white. And then we're kind of kind of chintzy out of a, a lot of, well, it's not too much work, but we didn't want to replace the whole ceiling because really the ceiling is in really good condition. Uh, a while back, they had a baby leak and they replaced this whole wall over here, um, but they never fixed this. So this is literally the only spot. And so we'll actually, when we get in there, we'll see. It's really not that flimsy. It's not that bad, but it is sagging just a little bit. And so I wanted to just finish it out and give it that nice, clean, crisp look instead of just painting it. Um, we're going to do this foam faux wood panel and it's just white and it's just going to be a paneling. And so you literally just glue it up there because it's foam. It's, you can just cut it with an exacto life knife and get in there and then we'll do some baseboard. Uh, I mean some crown molding up top and really make it, you know, seal the deal there. And then I've got to do some caulking and things like that. Get these steps done. And then it's actually got a new replaced faux wood floor, which is super cute. And you can kind of see it. I stepped on a corner of this and pulled it up the other day, but it's, it's actually really well done and it's cute. And so we'll just clean it up really good. And then we'll leave that alone. And then we have to get carpet. So carpet, uh, I just went to Home Depot and they have it, you know, for like 250 per square foot. This isn't going to get a whole lot of traffic. We're literally just going to sit a bed on it that is going to take up the majority of the space and then, um, you know, get a cute comforter and some pillows, but the carpet won't be walked on. So we're just going to get kind of like a normal gray, light gray car uh, carpet. And then what else? I'll show you what I'm thinking as far as the sink and the faucet. I'm super excited about that. That'll really make this whole place pop. And then that's it for now. So I'll keep you posted. Once I get the countertop installed and then the sink and the faucet, then we can come back and you can take a look at it. So <gasps> next video.